Yeah, so in that regard, I really feel like my mom was there because I was like, my mom would definitely be doing this. And then I was like, hold on, we're definitely doing this. And it was kind of crazy because like, you know how the, some some ideas animate you? Mm-hmm. That's how, that, I feel like that a lot. Of, I was I was just crying so much. Just like, <laughs> I don't mean to. <clears throat> just crying. You know, I left a lot of weights. Go man, so. crying. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, I was just like. Just like at church, like you yes, just, I was just thinking. I was just thinking that overwhelmed with emotion. Oh you yeah, know? I'd be crying like, <laughs> <laughs> virtually every service these right? days. And it gets to a point where sometimes like the tears are at your eyes, and you're just like, man, this is not really like a crying moment right now. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's, it's, it's a lot. <laughs> it's just a lot. <laughs> it's, that was it, bro. It's exactly how I felt for real. And uh, it also took me back to when we were um, eating at JP Austin for our birthdays, like. When I we turned twenty eight, yeah, two years ago, yeah, yeah, I don't know. yeah, yeah, like and I was just eating dinner and I was just like crying and like just like kind of felt like not weird. Like when you but... see a great piece of art, <laughs> <laughs> that's it. Guy, dude, you you're my freaking agent, dude. I swear, yeah, that's, that's a, it. Yep, for real. So yeah, I felt I felt the whole I felt at Grace's graduation. Yeah, at Grace's graduation. My sister, um. Graduated from Texas State. Bang. I don't, I don't Eat them up. Eat them up. Go Cats, go. Let's go. It was really cool. Bang. Yes. Shout out. Shout out. Shout out all the graduates. Graduation season. Let's go. Great job, everybody. Good job. Well done. You did it. That's a freaking tough sledding. Let's go. That was a tough... I know it's not easy. Another semester down. Let's go. That's some, what's up. Some things are meant to test you and like break you and like make you fail. And see what you do with failure or see what you do when you're all the way broken down or see like not everything when I sometimes because we work out so much like working out to failure means like something different to me because because I work out. It's like, oh, working out to failure is not that bad. But when you work out to failure in life, it's pretty bad. <laughs> like that's it's tough. You know what I'm saying? It hits you hard. And yeah. uh, way to persevere. Great yeah, job. It's like, whole, it's like the, the celebration of the graduation is like the acknowledgement that you just – we're able to like handle all the the daily challenges. You're able to handle the daily grind of doing like these small kind of arbitrary rules and like abiding by them and like showing up and then doing all that shit. And then it's like, I did it. It's like winning a whole bunch of small scrimmages. And then it's like, all right, you won the season, kid. It's like, we got yeah. it. Yeah. It's really like that. We won the Super Bowl. Let's go. Let's go celebrate it. Yeah. It was Super Bowl. It was the. <laughs> it was Super Bowl. <laughs> For real. It was crazy. Yes. Uh, that type of energy. We were in the. It's important to do that. We were in the basketball saying? gym, and you've got all the graduates basically on the basketball floor, and then the most of the seats in the arena were like filled. We were on the top row. There wasn't a whole lot of other people on the top row, but like relatively, that was like the easiest place to sit. Yeah. And it got lit in there a couple times, like like the thing is rumbling, dude. Rumble. Like a thunderstorm in there. It was tight. Yes, and then you and did you say the guy who went last had a whole. Almost yes. skit prepared. I, I'm sure I can go on Twitter and like find this video. Like I'm sure I can. Yeah. Um, Texas State graduation. Yeah. This dude, the last guy in line, I thought maybe he was like the president and the valedictorian. He might have just had like a last and first name that started with Z. I, like, you know what I'm saying? Z-Y. Uh -huh. So. You have to know you're going last if you got that last name. Like uh, my, my stepbrothers. Zuniega. Yeah. Z-U. Z you know what I'm saying? Not much is coming, coming after Z-U. Yeah. <laughs> They're going to be last. <laughs> What do you do? You just adopt that personality. The, the the first shall be last. And the last shall be first. What's up? I'm Chris Frizzuniga. Like, that'd be me. No, I don't know. I'm just saying, like... Yo. <laughs> but, uh... The guy had a whole thing prepared. Yes. So, he he has a whistle. Rumble. Beca because, there's, like, as three different times, I saw some people hitting some dance moves, and there was, like, a whistle that would start playing, like... He's like blowing the whistle yeah. while they're hitting their dance move, and people would be like, ah, ah. And it, if they were <laughs> yeah. lit, if they were lit, it would get lit, right? But also, yeah, then people started like hitting whatever emote they had lined up while they were getting their graduation. There's a little run, and then it was, I felt like we we're all playing American Idol. It was like Fortnite. <laughs> it was like Fortnite for sure. Everyone you could was see like, emote <laughs> for real, and then we were all just like, the crowd for five seconds. Oh, their emote was lit. Their emote ah, was lit. Ah. <laughs> yeah, bro. So the last dude, oh my god, he pops up and he gets like that initial like you know 
He knows it's coming. <laughs> yeah, but it's also crazy because at first you just think everyone, a, a lot of people hit a Fortnite Sully just now. So you think he's just going to hit a light Fortnite Sully. But instead, it turns out he's the guy with the whistle. And it turns out that he's really good at dancing. Yeah. <laughs> so he's hitting like a full, do you ever catch the TikTok videos where it's like an arena and then a guy just like pops out and he starts doing like real break dancey, like crazy bouncing back and forth, jumping in and out of his own legs, like street dancing. Yeah. Yeah. He, he goes off. Goes off. Goes off, bro. Like, uh, to I'm the tour. check that out. I kind of want to see it. <laughs> <laughs> so the whole arena is going nuts and then he yeah. like stops and he's got his own whistle. So he's like, <laughs> <laughs> he's going crazy yes and uh the president comes down and pulls out his phone and like takes a selfie with the dude while he's like uh right when he finishes and it was just like a crazy moment it was cool it was lit that's awesome yeah i n definitely didn't think you were gonna get like entertainment but it was like tight it was it popped tight. off it popped off for sure <laughs> Way to hold it down. That's awesome. Yeah, man. It felt the best thing I could. It took me a minute to figure it out while I was there because, like, I just had a feeling in me, but it, then I couldn't quite diagnose it. It was a really happy, good feeling. And then I figured it out. It was, it felt like in high school winning a varsity football game where afterwards, like, er, the, the dads are trying to kind of beat traffic and the coaches don't want to fucking be there till two in the morning. So they're kind of trying to get you back in the locker room. But like all the families are like on the field or like at the edge where they can come meet y'all. And y'all are like celebrating the fact that you won that crazy game for like as long as you can. Like you can't stay too long, but you don't want to leave quite yet. Mm. And all the lights are on and everybody won. And you're around all of the families of the people that were the, the competitors. So there's like two different energies. The competitor that fought and won and then like the proud person just like – who was rooting for them. Yeah. And you're like together in that for that moment. Yeah. And it was just like, uh, yeah, everyone's like celebrating. People are like screaming like, yeah, people are literally jumping in the river at Texas state. Like, jumping in the river. That's important. Yeah. You're seeing like all the dad me. I'm like, yep, yep. yep. It's another good win. Another good win. <laughs> like, it was just like, yep. It's hilarious. Yeah. It drew me straight back to that. And, uh, it was, it was beautiful, man. Mm. I love when life's beautiful. Yes. It's a great piece of art. It's a great piece of art. And with that being said, welcome into the MJ38 show. Episode number 28. 28. What is that? Is that a... Maybe AP. AP? Maybe AD. <laughs> Come on. I think we know. Uh, All day. Let's give it to Adrian Peterson. Yes. Good pull. Let's go. That guy won me a fantasy league. <laughs> Dude, my best Adrian Peterson memory is pre-fantasy football sports at all. Mm -hmm. It was... You were over at my house, at my mom's house in Pflugerville, and we were watching the Monday night game, and we watched Adrian Peterson break the record for, I think, most scrimmage yards in a mm -hmm. career. And he did it after his ACL tear. So he had to get an ACL tear the season before, recover, come back, and then play this season and be the same to like break the record. And he was just going off that game. <laughs> and people were like, yeah, he's a GOAT. He's a GOAT. Goaty. And we were just sitting there, and I was just like, man, this is like a piece of... If you didn't watch this game, you didn't watch him break the record. We watched this game. This is tight. That's cool. Yeah, super cool. That's awesome. I don't even remember that like that clearly. I love that it's like a memory for you. Yeah, that's my <laughs> that's, tight. that's who I, that's when I learned who Adrian Peterson was. And I was like, AP. Oh, he's like Barry Sanders. He's a beast. Yeah. Single handed not single handedly. I think I had like Cam Newton that same year. Either way. Shout out to that man. A P A D. All day, baby. He was a beast. Get hit and keep running. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And we out here. Sorry, yeah, we're just jumping in. But we've been talking for a minute now. Yeah, my dog. What's up, hopefully, bro? Hopefully, what's up, dog? To all the dogs out there. All the dogs. Hopefully, your day's going well. Yeah, hope so. It's been a minute since we had like a formal introduction. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I like the podcast is evolving, man. Yeah, man. We're just it's talking. Tight. I love it. It really is like an stream of consciousness. It's I've been tight. listening to podcasts a little bit more myself in the mm -hmm. car because sometimes I'm just toasted. Like, I'm my exhausted. It, yeah, but it's a different. Our job. Requires like a lot of processing power in my brain. Like I'm firing neurons like all day really fast with like high priority. And I don't get a lot of just like, uh, that's why I like to watch movies because it's like my brain gets to be like, oh, uh, mm -hmm. I know I don't have to be firing neurons right now. Mm -hmm. So that's when I, whenever I say I feel fried, so that sometimes more what I'm referring to is like my brain's like got, starting to get a lag time because I've been firing neurons for so long. Like I need like ATP or carbs or something like that because I'm like, mm -hmm. my brain's like slower than it's supposed to be. 
Yeah. 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 Mentally like exhausted. <clears throat> right. Yeah. It's crazy how I can like feel what that feeling feels like. If you can feel it with me, hopefully I'm getting better <laughs> at my job. But it's like, uh, mm. yeah, too much I've focus. I've been in the studio for a while. Yeah. Same thing, Making right? Music like that. Yeah. For like two, three hours. It's like, okay. Oof. I take a break from that. <laughs> yeah. And uh, same thing with video games after like late night sessions. I don't even play enough to get to feeling like that anymore. But like sometimes it's just like whew, my eyes hurt, you know? <laughs> okay, you're with me though. Yeah, yeah. What the <sighs> fuck was I talking about? We were talking about graduation. That shit was tied jumping in the river at Texas State. I'm talking about listening to more podcasts lately. Oh, yeah. So sometimes like I'm fried and I think that like I listen to a lot of hip hop and hip hop is so emotionally... Like swell, there's a lot of swells and drops, and people are pouring their heart out, or they're like, it's art, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So to listen to hip hop is to digest art, in my opinion, and it's gonna make me want to feel something because it's art. And I'm like, I can't feel things right now. I have no, I've got no more sheesh to send to anything. I can't process words right now. Mm. It's like okay, that then I put on the podcast, and it's so relaxing to sit in their waters. I think that's why we, I use it as yeah, a metaphor yeah. here too. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And honestly, I start to get, I start to feel better because it's like. They're not predictable in a sense, but like the book is like safe and chill, and mm -hmm. I'm starting to like recoup a little bit instead of being taken on these freaking roller coaster and rides these drops. <laughs> yeah. of this hard music I listen to. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. so I hope I that you. yeah, definitely. I love yeah. Every once in a while, just like throw the Joe Rogan podcast in a rotation. Yes, normally I listen to usually like nothing. Sometimes it's a song we're listening to or working on, or a song we just made, or whatever but it's nice to just have oh yeah whatever music's on but then also it's nice to have the audiobook option i've been using that a lot lately and then also the podcast option they're all like different frequencies it's like the audiobook one is like learning for real <laughs> and like music is also like demanding to a degree yeah of like not of like your being to it you know what i'm saying i guess you could like just kind of put it on the background but uh i feel like the podcast is the most it's like hands off i can just like coast on this i can float <laughs> I could float mentally on this drive. Yes. I feel that. I like that. It's helpful. I've needed mm -hmm. it lately too. Just, I would just listen. I would just turn, if I didn't have a podcast to go to, I would turn it off because I'm like, I can't listen to music right now. Mm. But two, two podcasts that I listened to that were good were Joe Rogan and The Rock. I'm listening to, I listened to like on about 30 minutes of that one. To be honest though, I'm like, I'm listening to it because it should be good. Because it's Joe Rogan and The Rock, and he's not really on that show very much. Mm -hmm. And he's The Rock, right? So come he, on. He's got to have some perspective. What are you cooking? <laughs> yeah, come on. <laughs> well, like, it's just all right. Like, I can't really get through that one, to be honest. Mm -hmm. Just not. It's nice when I need it. When I'm tired, even though it's boring, I'm like, it's cool. But there's some people that where the podcast is really just, like, electric, and it's really good. Um, so Derek from More Plates, More Dates is the most recent one. And he is usually a, a podcast that really captivates my attention. And I appreciate his perspective. And I remember the last one, I listened to it. And that became the standard for what I thought a good Joe Rogan was. The first time I ever heard that guy. Really? Yes. And like years ago? Uh, how, how long ago? You think? It, it had to be a year and a half to two years ago mm -hmm. when I heard the first Derek, uh, Derek more from... More Plates, More Dates. Yeah. yeah. It's titled the same, Derek from More Plates, More Dates. It's like a long ass title. Mm -hmm. But then that's a website that he runs... And he sells like supplements, but he also critiques, I guess he runs a blog and makes videos about the people who are the biggest personalities. Like when the liver king was saying he wasn't on steroids, mm. he was one of the guys that was like, I guarantee you he's on steroids. I guarantee you he's on steroids. Watch, I'll literally show you scientifically why he's on steroids. Mm. And he knows all of the, how supplements and amino acids and vitamins work. So when you're talking about any supplement, he like, it's not cap. It's not like creatine makes you big, but like it also makes you retain water. He like knows exactly what's going on. Mm -hmm. Sight, it's a good episode. Yes. But what to bring it to our podcast, that's a lot of biographical information for you guys to bring it to this point right here. What they were talking about in the first 30 minutes was just like blowing my mind, dude. Cause they were talking about they were talking about how girls have like a different life being in a relationship now is so much different than it was like 20 years ago and now like the, a lot of girls are um so into social media mm. that and this is for, obviously from a male perspective right because obviously men are really into social media too but this is Derek from our place that more dates like, talking okay heard and he's talking about how women are um like if they have a tinder account where they're getting like 
bombarded with matches. Like they could just like swipe match, swipe match, swipe match, get like twenty matches in like less than thirty minutes. And like the amount of um day opportunities that that creates for them combined with if they have a social media account that has like over a hundred thousand followers because like they're beautiful they just like post pictures of themselves in bikinis and stuff like that like you know I, instagram girls i'm not saying all girls are like this but instagram girls mm -hmm. in this culture this day and age this was never available ever in any point in history not like this not, not at all knowledge. no <laughs> it wasn't like that bro <laughs> This is awesome. It might be the pendulum swinging back towards in the favor of like women having more power and culture and society. Mm. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? To kind of balance out the last however many too years. Too much order. Yeah, too much. Especially too much male patriarchy, I guess what women call it. They couldn't yeah. vote and shit in the 60s. In a sense of chaos and order, just like in feminine and masculine. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. and in the cosmic pendulum. Yeah. So whenever <laughs> I think about women having more power than men in the society reign, I'm like, well, that sounds fair. Like, it sounds about right. Like... <laughs> But <clears throat> so Derek is talking about how these girls have so much opportunity to date. And it's basically mm -hmm. like 10% of the male population is garnering 90% of the women in the marketplace because their standards are so high and because they have so many options that they're instead of going across and upward like Jordan Peterson <clears> describes, <throat> it's like ninety percent of the women are going for the top ten percent, straight upward, just straight upward, dude. And then the ten percent of women is available and open to dating like the rest of the pool based on their like um, viewpoints and like who they are, whether they're headed or behind at the times. So all that to be said. <laughs> It's different nowadays. It's different nowadays, which is we can talk about nowadays. that too. But I guess like the point that I actually want to bring up, I'm like, man, there's other stuff within that conversation that I want to like bring to light here <laughs> on this podcast right now. They're talking about Andrew Tate and they're talking uh -huh. about like what he represents and how. Um, I don't know enough. Yeah. He kind of, this guy does. That's the great thing about I Derek. Yeah. <laughs> bring me information. Yeah. He's got it. So yeah. But Andrew Tate, you know, he's like a lot of what his message is, is discipline and focus. And it's it's brought across and almost like a WWE wrestler, like a really good personality, like a heel almost, like a really sharp edged personality telling you like, you wonder why you're broke. You never want to get up. You never want to put in the work. 90% of males won't be up before 4 a.m. I get up at 3.59 just to <laughs> fuck those guys, just to get them out of my way. You got 60 seconds on them. Yeah. That's all I need. Yeah, some shit like that. I'm, I just come, I just gave you an AI version of an Andrew Tate video right there. But like, there's something to, like even Jordan Peterson, a lot of people are like, there's something to Andrew Tate. What is it? And personally, I think they also say, too, that it's, like, the discipline and focus message that he has. Like, you could be working harder. And, like, you probably are making more excuses than you have to. And he's, like, telling you that in this really abrasive way. But it's also, like, really attractive to women, which is kind of, like, the ideology maybe that, like, the discipline and the masculine discipline and focus, even though people ha kind of hate him because he's kind of a heel and a douchebag, it's like it is attractive to women. Like women do want men to be like that. And men mm -hmm. are lacking that to some degree in our culture now. Mm -hmm. I and, see what you're saying. Okay. There's those things. But ultimately why I brought it up on our <laughs> podcast is okay. because what's dope about us is that we don't deal with any of that, more or less. Mm -hmm. I ain't dealing with any of that shit. Like Any of that shit being like what? I don't know, bro. The 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 culture of – I don't have a Tinder. I, mm -hmm. And I'm like by choice, you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. it doesn't – I've like experimented with it and I've like gone on dates from Tinder before. But also Tinder's been around for what? Like six years? Since I was like 23, I think I could have had a Tinder. 22, 23. Yeah. I say longer probably. Okay. We'll say like eight years. Whatever. Seven. <laughs> Seven years. Sounds, that's, that's a fair number. Fair enough. <sighs> I've only ever had it on my phone for like maybe three months total of those seven years because I would just like download it, fuck around with it, understand it a little bit, delete it, and then maybe like later was single again, downloaded it, and I was like, no, I'm going to like go on a date this time. But like not something I deal with. Not something I deal with. Instagram, mm -hmm. to be honest with y'all, not something I deal with. Mm -hmm. Like I literally... I'm trying to post and ghost. Yeah, post and ghost, dude. I'm, I'm not even... Boy Joey Rogue. <laughs> not even thinking about it, bro. <laughs> like literally not in my life. Uh -huh. And... The ramifications of those things are so heavy on our culture, allegedly, 
you know, like Derek's, Derek from our place more dates is talking about how it's creating a culture of adolescent males where they're just like not getting a lot of dates. Like nobody is like going on a lot of dates right now because of the current culture of our society. Just like not a lot of guys are willing to admit that that's the truth or like talk about it like that. Like let us garner any statistics on it. Mm. But like because of the shift in across and over being 90% is going from 10%, 80% or 90% of the male population, like not really going on a lot of dates, not making a lot of connection like that. And then what that's doing overall to like the male psyche and how the male psyche wants to go about taking on the world. It's like lessening the family dynamic more. It's creating like this more independent mm-hmm. structure that's matching the women independent structure. And ultimately it's like antisocial behavior. And it's like, that's so serious. Yeah. It's a lot of heavy weight on our culture Damn, and our society. That just hit deep. Right? <laughs> In my chest. <laughs> <laughs> Motherfuckers be, I think people are going For through real. that, you know? Yeah. Golly. Yeah, it's crazy. I think I saw Bo Burnham maybe saying that like, it's crazy that since YouTube's like public now, or like with Google and like their company and Facebook and all that shit, they're all like, they're, it's a, it's a fight. It's a war for your attention. I think I remember describing it to you like that. Weeks ago, a couple weeks ago. But yeah, it's like we just, people just want more and more of your attention. And then, or how are they, and like the tools are like in social media and shit like that. It's crazy. It's just never really been around, y'all. Never. <laughs> Not like this. Not I, like I this. I thought about that with. <laughs> Not like this. Not like this. <laughs> Dude, I think it's. Shout out to the Matrix. So keep going. Oh yeah, God, you're in my head. <laughs> I was thinking about, I was thinking about Family Guy referencing the Matrix. So I'm pretty sure that's in the Family Guy too. Really? I think there's a knot like this. <laughs> I think I've seen it. I don't know. That's where I thought you were pulling from. With you guys. We don't... Well, one thing is that, like, we really don't... You cannot... There's a streamline. Like, that's the thing about God, in my opinion. It's God. Like, all that stuff is going on in culture, right? Mm. But there's just a streamline for me to just be on my story and on my path. Where, like, even though society and culture is, like... We are struggling. You're all struggling with that. It's like, it's mutual that we're all in the society and culture together. So if that thing is like going through hardship and change, then like innately we're going through it too. I definitely went through a long period of time where I just like wasn't going on a lot of dates and I was like working for five, sometimes six days a week. And you're trying to make sure you pay all your bills. You don't really have like money saved up yet. And like, there's not a lot of opportunity to meet somebody. And then when you would have met somebody, it's hard to um like schedule and account for like dating them it's like a difficult thing to manage and like Mm -hmm. if you tried to wrap your head around a strategic way to deal with that i think that that's like a way more difficult problem than you have to deal with because there's just a streamline for you yeah the streamline is just like do maximize personal legend continue just do what you have to do every day yeah what's my today quest (laughs) like i just need to today at 24 give me 24 i want more but i'll start with these like Mm -hmm. i gotta i gotta do what i have to do today and then I'll pick up the next one. And like, you can just do that. And all the best things are there. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It'll work out exactly how you wanted it to. Better than you could have imagined. Imagine that. You can't. <laughs> <laughs> it's wonderful. It would inspire wonder. Yes. So that's, while they were talking about, it's like watching the news and it's like. Joe Rogan and More Plates, More Dates. Yeah. Uh-huh. And I was like, damn, it's fucked up out there. It's fucked up. This shit gets deep. <laughs> yeah. And and I can feel it. You're like, you know what? I think that is going on. Like, I do think that it's harder. I don't know. You When you see, like, movies and culture referencing, like, the 70s and 80s and 90s, feels like people were just, like, in happy relationships all the time. But it does feel like that's, like, less around now. Mm-hmm. I don't know if I, I don't, I, I can't really like say that's necessarily true. I can't say it'd be like, I know it's true, but it just seems like the America that's represented in like the seventies and eighties, it doesn't feel like now, it, now it does feel different. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Yeah. It's different. It's more rare. I guess, I don't know. It's wild. It's wild to think about the little pocket that we're in right now with that. Cause yeah, the then, cosmic swing back, but it's like, you can use that. Cause like feminism, like that's just like, we believe in that women are you know, taking more power, having more ability to choose and having the, which is like mother nature being able to kind of dictate what's going on here. You know, it's like this, like orders, like like the masculinity side. And then like the chaos is like the feminine side. And it's like, we need the, we need the structure. We need to have structure. And we're all just 
random balls of potential energy, chaos potentially. Most of us, it's easy to fall into chaos. But it's like, so we need like structure and walls and like a society to live in and abide by those rules. But too much of that structure is not good. Yeah. I'm sorry, I got on a tangent there. Yeah, I was, I was like, <laughs> we're shifting gears here. We're shifting gears. <laughs> I feel you though. It's hard to structure and chaos. Oh, yeah, but disguise it as feminism. Mm. But it's like, because like, uh, that sounds like feminist. Like, I believe in like strong independent women, of course. Of course. But then it's like, yeah, also maybe you could use that as a guys to split the the narrative or use that as a guys to like uh break the, the the family structure that we're talking about here. Yeah. The more the, the rarity that we're seeing now versus twenty, thirty years ago. Yes. And like happy married couples. Yes. Sorry. Yeah, you know, if you're trying to break that up, it's like you could it's I don't know. It's like more like independent women, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like as a as a title more than like a Maybe like an energy or a character. I don't know, going in. Yeah, I don't want to speak for the women because I'm not a woman. But I'm not a woman. I the same thing. I just think that too. But can I be? Like, like sorry. <laughs> <laughs> what? Go on. No, no, no. no. <laughs> Apparently, I can be. Right. Like you could identify as one if you wanted to. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, yeah. Right. You'd have but to I'm really. You you have to really commit. I think mm-hmm. you know. But yeah. Anyways, though, it's wild. No, so with that being said, that is a wild thing that's going on here. I mm-hmm. don't think I, I don't think I could identify as a woman. I don't know what y'all go through. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? I don't I imagine. I just like I, th- I don't think that women understand what the male dominance hierarchy structure is like. I think that like you can often infer, and then you can understand. Like women are usually smarter than men on an emotional, uh, quantitative level. Yeah, more so, interested in people than things. Right. So I think you might be able to pick up what's going on in the masculine hierarchy structure quicker than we're able to pick up what's going on in the feminine struggles of life. Mm-hmm. But like, uh, you just wouldn't know unless you were going through it, you know? Mm-hmm. And I think, I understand the allure of wanting to be strong and independent just as like a human, you yeah. know? You want to be able to fend for yourself or like, I remember thinking about it when I was like 18, 19. It's like, I need to be able to carry one unit of life around. It's like my own. It's like, I need to be able to make sure that like, I can account for one life. Like I feed this thing. I sleep this thing. Yeah. I make, I make enough money so that I can have a house. I'm trying to, yeah. I'm trying to make sure this, this thing's story is maximized in yeah. a positive light. Yes. And whatever my story is, I respect your story. Whatever your story is. 100%. Who am I to say what's going on in your story? Hell yeah. I have no idea. If you want to like bear the responsibility of yourself because it feels like a good like what would you call it like uh self-fulfilling thing totally get that who wouldn't want that you know what Mm -hmm. i'm saying but i do think that like the family dynamic is like beyond self-fulfilling it's like more fulfilling (laughs) 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 because i was talking about this recently so it's like fresh on my mind too no lie love love it right it's like i i can only do so much I can only do so much like me and then I have a relationship with God that allows me to do like more than just what I could do. But like, even that's only so much, but like with a partner and like having a partner is one thing, but like a lot of partnerships, people are still independent in the partnerships. But I feel like when you really like, that's what I think marriage represents is like, you're going to marry them. Like you would marry like olive oils together into one thing. Mm -hmm. It's like you, you, you're like a power now or like you're two instead of a one. You're not two ones. It's like you're two now. But like twos are mo- way more than two ones. Like you can do more yeah. with each other. There's a third thing. There's a marriage of them. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. The spirit that marries them. Yes. That's involved as well. So I think that like it's idealistic in my mind, even though there's a lot of compromise and sacrifice there. Like it's easier to be independent for sure because you don't have to answer to anybody. Much more simple. Much more simple. Mm-hmm. Yes. You don't have. I guess you have to answer to yourself, but a lot yeah, of times you're always. not even doing that though. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So like much less do you want to answer to somebody else for how you're acting and being and stuff like that. It's a lot of responsibility to bear an existence, one existence. And then you got to juggle multiple existences. Yeah. You got to have like hope and faith that they're going to keep their shit together and like maximize their story. Yeah. We could predict, we could accurately predict our stories together forward, you know? Yes. And what if I'm ambitious, right? Mm-hmm. It's like, I need to predict them going forward forward not just like forward through time like relatively predictable but also like mm. i i need i also would like it if you were ma- maximizing our legend together and if at some point you're not into that that's gonna really suck for me you know what i'm mm. saying like that mm-hmm. that's so much to gamble 
on one side of the argument for sure. Yeah. But it's like, that's the, I think that's the way sometimes you're going to get some tasks where like, that's the thing that you need. You need the power of the family structure and, and what it takes to embody that. And like the discipline and responsibilities, like that's like the deepest echelon of those responsibility and discipline upgrades and levels is like when you're taking care of someone else and like helping them learn discipline. Mm -hmm. It's like, that's really how you become like a sensei. And I think some quests in life require like sensei yeah, literally. skill. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yes. And you can't do it until you're a sensei, but you couldn't be a sensei if you weren't like... Get the other articulated or like, yeah. Yeah. Interpret and articulate and act upon and guide at the same time. Take care of you for you and they're able to take care of them. And then we're also able to take care of each other and us. It's like three things. Yeah. <laughs> It's more work, but it's it's more input for more output. It's higher frequency. Like, that's what I'm doing here. Like, at some point, you're trying to climb to the highest frequency you could possibly be. Mm -hmm. Maximize that personal legend, whatever that is for you. Right. Yes. Golly. That time it really hit for me when you said it. <laughs> exactly. It's like, wait, why do that? Because it's idealistic and like the MJ38 code. It's like one of the things is maximize your personal legend. Mm -hmm. It's a hard thing to wrap your head around, but it's like, be all you can be, player. <laughs> like what's the what's the most yes you could do like what's the biggest what's the high score highest score you could leave on like the, the arcade we're all playing mm -hmm. S side note if you've ever seen rick and morty when i was watching the matrix the other day i was like i'm pretty sure we're just playing roy i'm pretty <laughs> sure we're just playing roy <laughs> yeah this seems like it just seems like roy to me mm -hmm. hard to explain that what the way that movie made me feel but it made me i think it's because you're i'm a consciousness that controls all of this Yes. So it's easy for my consciousness to identify with a game like Roy because it's like, like, like up here, I'm like, that is what it's like. <laughs> but I'm like, maybe it's back here and this thing is controlling all this thing. It's like, it is. It's just right here. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's in my mm -hmm. brain. Yeah. All right. That's where we feel it's like localized and centralized. Right. Yeah. I think we have like control of that, but I'm not sure if we like, we're aware of that. Uh, you know? <laughs> <laughs> we're like not nah, right it's yeah we're crazy. in like a a block where like i don't remember what happened before i was born but like i think after i die i'll remember like a longer a longer lifespan unless like you know that's just one theory of what's going on here who knows who knows you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I, I couldn't be like a i was given life when i was a zero mm. and this is like a fresh run for me and when i die it'll be like you that that's life how was it? One for one. Yeah, one for one. <laughs> Great job, kid, hopefully. Mm. But like, I don't know what's going on here, you know? Sometimes I think that, like, if I'm a star, we're made of stardust. Neil deGrasse Tyson said that on an interview. Really? On the news. They asked him what the biggest takeaway, the most important thing that we've learned from astrophysics. And then he said that the stuff that makes up all of the planets and all the stars, all the chemicals are the same exact chemicals that are like in our skin and our bones. It's all like carbon dioxide and um, to the molecular level, yes, uh, chemical level, chemical, molecular, neutrons, protons, protons electrons, electrons dog. <laughs> it's the same stuff. And he was like, so like, damn, you are stardust, literally, not like artistically, but also artistically, which is what makes it so beautiful. Ah, uh. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and I was like, yeah, like matter can never be created nor destroyed. I don't know how that fits into, because in church we learned today about Elohim. Respect the Elohim, it's a whole new regime. That's a, that's a Jay-Z line that I didn't get until I was at church today. I learned what Elohim means. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> right? It's tight, right? I was like, I love my, I love my pastor, man. He does, he does it for me. Elohim means from nothing. Mm. So it's like, it's, there wasn't like uh it means like flat nothing. Like it wasn't like there was chaos and he made order from it. It's like there was lit nothing and mm -hmm. then there was everything. Elohim means like from literally nowhere, which is hard, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then that's that's the, that's how powerful God is. Is like he didn't even need order to make chaos. He needed nothing to make chaos in order. Bang. Yeah. And then, but then that kind of counteracts like matter can neither be created nor destroyed. It's like that kind of says there was a centralized matter, and then. At least in our, our perception, <clears throat> physical world, our laws of physics, or whatever, however it stands. Whose laws? I'm a, cow <laughs> I'm a cowboy for the laws of physics, dog. <laughs> I'm on God time. Yeah, I think we, we break anything. electronics sometimes. Call me crazy. Call me crazy. I'm like an EMP sometimes, dude. <laughs> it's crazy. <I'm> like, <laughs> 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 yeah, 
Yes. Know? We're really on one in this podcast. Create the spark in electricity. It's real. It's real. Mm-hmm. I remember being a saltgrass and telling myself, like, sometimes I feel like I'm the electricity in these walls. Like, that's a bold statement. But sometimes I just come in on such a high frequency, and then the night is so high frequency, I'm just like, the same current that is in the room right now, the same current that everyone's riding and everyone's vibing on, it's like, that current's in me right now. Like, I feel it. Mm-hmm. I'm, like, riding that lightning, too. And I'm just like, want to hit it gritty. And I'm like, what's up? What you need? I got it right now. Let's go. Boom, boom, boom. I'm out of here. I'm out of here. Boom, boom, boom. Hey, hey. Hello, my name's Matthew. How are you doing tonight? Like, I'm in there, bro. You know what I'm saying? Yes, dog. There's times when <clears throat> when you feel like that and it's like, there's something special going on there. Mm-hmm. So Steph Curry has that. I see it in him too. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. He's just like riding that. Being the electricity in the room. Yeah, dude. Being the, in the song of life, being the bass. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're the 808 of life. <laughs> It's a walking 808, dog. Dude, it's it's that's just me trying to describe this feeling that we have. It's mm-hmm. the same feeling as when I feel the elect- the electronics break sometimes when I like laugh too hard or peak. Like I peaked the mic and it broke. Like what is that? You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? It's crazy. Yeah. Un- unexplainable things happen like that sometimes. Man, the family unit is more than self-fulfilling. Yes. Literally. <laughs> Come on, that's hard. <laughs> I think it is. I think it's just true. I think that, I think you, you get to an end of your half. It's like you can, a lot of time you're trying to fill up your cup all the way. And then it's like, the it's like you need to fill up your cup and then share it with somebody else. But filling it up your own cup can be so hard. And maybe when you're in relationships, you don't do a good job of filling up your cup. And so it's hard for you to be in a relationship and be a maximized person in your own regard. It's like, ideally, you'd be a maximized person that bears the responsibility of like a new, it's like Fable 2. It's like, like you know what I'm saying? It's mm-hmm. like a different game you have to play now because you, you've you already kind of maximized doing you. And now mm-hmm. you're going to share it with someone else. Yeah, intermingle it. But that's a harder task. And people are, that's the thing. So people are struggling to fulfill themselves mm-hmm. more than mm-hmm. I think they were 20 or 30 years ago. That's a big thing too. Yes, and so I think that's why the relationship. Another are, wedge. Come on, dude. <laughs> come I'm, on. I feel like Sherlock. <laughs> I'm figure out this issue, dog. Because yes, I think like back in the day, maybe if you just like you know went to high school and you fucking wrestled and you went to college. At some and, point, you just, or even before that, you like did just what your parents did to a degree, or like hundreds of years of years ago. Like literally, that was what was going on. You were making barrels or making whatever the hell you were making or farming or however your family was a butcher. That, that's what came to my mind too was a butcher. Right. It's crazy. You're I'm just like, doing the family trade, bro. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And then, yeah, what's you're 20 years old and you've been butchering for like four years probably. Probably nice. your whole life, dog. <laughs> in Indiana, like You kids, grew up in a butcher shop. Yeah, exactly. Kids drive tractors in Indiana. Like, mm-hmm. so, and then once you're like 20 years old, kind of like, what, what do you call that? Being an apprentice, but you know what you're doing. You're helping your dad run the shop. Mm-hmm. Like, you're like there. You're there. Like, <laughs> Might as well share that with somebody. I think mm-hmm. it was way simpler back then. That's yeah. what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Way more complicated now. The social media thing. Dude, it's real. It's so new to us. It's so new. Relatively new, for sure. Definitely within the span of human history. That shit's new as fuck. <laughs> we just barely got here, apparently. And now these girls have OnlyFans. I mean, come on, dude. How's a young man cope with that? How's it happening? Well, what do we got to do now? <laughs> Let's say like... It's wilding. You know, 23-year-old me gets my first job on the Riverwalk, and uh, I meet a girl. I'm super into her. She's super hot. It turns out she doesn't work at all, and she drives a Viper because she has an OnlyFans. I'm supposed to be huh. like, she's like, D- drive the Viper, baby. It's your favorite car. I feel like there's, there was something here. We were supposed to meet. I had I had your Viper this whole time. I'm like, what What do you do? You're supposed to be like. <laughs> <laughs> what do you do? What's your occupation? I think Drink has a line like that. Right? I, like, I meet people and I got to ask them, what's their profession? Something like that. I don't know. You know what's funny is sometimes that's a natural thing that comes to me when I'm talking to people. I'm like, oh, so what do you do? And sometimes it's a really off-putting question. And I'm just like, I wasn't trying to be off-putting. I'll tell you what I do. I'm just, just talking here. You know I get, what I'm saying? I get books. <laughs> <laughs> For a living, cuz. Yeah. But it's crazy to, it's a whole thing, dude, that like people are dealing with out there. For real. People mm. buy books about it. People are going to the gym about it. You, they have therapists about it. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like Jordan Peterson's famous because you're all dealing with it. Like if you guys weren't struggling with this, he'd be broke. You know what I'm saying? Like his book makes sense because there's an issue at hand. 
Yeah, he's talking at the highest level, dog. Yeah. <laughs> he's going in. Fucking Jordan Peterson. But, but yeah, there's something going on. And all that's being, I don't know, manipulated? Maybe not manipulated, but... I would be willing to say yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think people... Used. Social media companies are definitely trying very hard to make social media the in our daily life. Mm-hmm. Like the way the news is in your daily life, like we're not really going to get away from newspapers or like CNN anytime soon. Like there's always going to be something. Y'all got to be tapped into what the hell's going on here. Yeah. they're trying. Social media is trying to become like something we have to have, but mm-hmm. it's like terrible for your brain. Not good for your perception of stuff. The same way they say like porn not is good. not good for your perception of sex. Mm-hmm. You've heard like young men shouldn't watch porn because you're going to think that's like, it's going to play into your perception of what sex is like. It's life. Yeah. I think social media is the same thing. 100%. Right. Mm-hmm. It's, it's not crazy. Good. It's fight for your attention. A fight for your, like a, your, your belief system almost. Yeah. Go on. Your attention for sure. What you, and your value structure. Mm. What you spend your time on, literally. Mm. Go on. You know? Yeah. <laughs> what you spend your time on is. It's it's some of your currency. Manipulate the thoughts you think. Mm. Or, you know. Yeah. Guide. Yeah. Manipulate to a degree. Because they're trying to promote usage. They're trying to create more users. I think Instagram made threads just to have another app. You ever get to the bottom of Instagram and you just go to Twitter because you're done. There's no more Instagram to read. That's why they made threads so you can stay on Instagram but still go to another app. And then they caught you for like two rotations now. And that's double the screen time. It's like a brilliant business model. Double the adware. Hmm. But it's it exists to encapsulate you. Like yes. Its whole purpose is yes. to make me stay on it. <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> I don't want that. I don't want your life. Like, I don't want that. <laughs> not interested. <laughs> you guys still haven't downloaded threads because I'm like, you bastards. Like, you sons of bitches. And then they trick, they've got it set up too, where it'll be like a threads post on my Instagram with a really catchy, like 10 letters. And, and it's like, read more. And I'm like, well, I want to see what that said. And then it's like, you must download threads. Download. And I'm like, cancel. You're not going to, not Boy. today. I don't need to see it. And then it's just crazy because how much, ha 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 ha. Yes, this is definitely something <laughs> I want to talk about. I can't believe how well we set it up. Let's go. So I'm at graduation. <laughs> And while I'm there, the urge to pull my phone out and take a post of my sister graduating, I was, my brain, I literally said to my brother, I, had, I need to do two things here. I need to scream when they say Grace's name, and I need to make sure I get a video. It's like, I'm not sure. Screaming when they said my sister's name, I was like, that makes sense to me because I'm a sports fan. You know what I'm saying? That's my gladiator. They're mm. going to, she, she's in her celly. I'm going to be like, yeah, <laughs> I'm selling too. The other one, the take a video one, I'm like, that's different. What is my urge to do that? Who am I doing that for? And I was like, I'm doing it for Grace, more or less. It's like, I want to take a video so that I was here and I took a video of her doing the thing, like for her. Because personally, I'm happy to have lived the moment. Like, I'll remember, you know what I'm saying? I might get older, my my memory is not so good. And I'll be like, I should have taken more videos, more pictures. But like right now, I really don't be like looking at my photo roll ever. You know what I'm Mm -hmm. saying? I just live life. Yeah. And like that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but I then, in the midst of feeling all of that, I'm like, definitely still going to take a video. Mm -hmm. I watch everyone in the crowd take their phones out. Mm -hmm. And everyone's got a phone out, like, waiting to take their video. And I just, to myself, I'm like, all these people are going to post this. And I was like, who are they posting it for? Is it for them? Is it for their kids? Is it because it's what you're supposed to do? Mm-hmm. Is it to be a good dad? Do you need to post a video of your daughter graduating on your Facebook? I'm like, kind of, kind <laughs> of. Like, it might hurt. Like, someone's son's, like, your kid might be like, you know, my dad never posts anything about me. Or like, I think mm-hmm. my dad sometimes might be like, you know, we don't ever post about him. I'm like, I don't ever post about anything. I don't ever post about anything. You nah. Know what I'm but yeah. it's in our life, though. It's there. Yes. Yes. It's. I think it's... Paying honor to the, I guess, the ability that we have now to commemorate something and have a memory of something and be able to revisit that memory with full clarity and like a, without any objective bias. It's like watching the film again. It's like, oh yeah, like I remember when that happened. That was, and like evoke those emotions and like pay homage to that. Nostalgic moments. You know what I'm saying? You give me a genius idea for an app because that's true. Sorry. To Uh just validate that real quick. Genius. That is kind of what's going on there. 
we it's do nice. we, we do did that. we didn't have the ability to save those moments ever before unbiasedly like this is what happened like it's it's not my memory (laughs) yeah right Uh never had the opportunity before and then we we love these people so much it's like the same thing as buying flowers it's like mildly arbitrary but you do it because you can because it's custom Mm -hmm. but like the social media recording the event on our phone has become custom to a degree and that's the thing that i was feeling while i was there i was like this is custom look everyone in this room is taking a video to either post on social media or to share it with somebody else about because it's not like i'm taking a video of her but like i'm gonna share it to other people as like a community virtue signal for some reason that part's tripping me out a little bit Mm. but like then you say because we can because we have the ability that we've never had before to like save these moments forever and cherish them it's like okay that kind of makes sense then actually Mm -hmm. but that gives me a brilliant idea we should make an app that's not social media where you can like have an Instagram reel more or less, but it's really just like your like photo vault or your personal memories. I guess it's what your photo folder is for. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But like it would something that isn't like in person, we'd have to like bump our phones or something like that to like see each other's Instagram page. Rather than being like a, a feed you scroll down, it'd be like trading cards, but of your life. Like, oh let me show you a picture of my kids. Boom. And it's like, oh my God, they're adorable. It's like, yeah, do we won the championship last year? Boom. But like, mm. it's not something you're posting for everybody to see. And it's not something, it's literally just to pay honor to, like you said, pay honor to the fact that I can save these moments now. It's like, I've got them all in here on this dope ass app. Mm. Something there. Because I don't want the social media part. Can I, can I divorce them? That's where the idea stemmed uh-huh. from. Can I just pay honor to those things and not need to signal to the community about it? Mm. Yeah, I guess you could. But, uh, yeah, right. Why not? Because the social media aspect of it has become cost, it's kind of uh-huh. rude to not. Whoa! Why don't you want to virtue signal me to the to the community? Why don't you want to? Are you not proud of me? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You just want to keep it to yourself. It's like no, I just don't want to partake in social media. Yeah. I don't, yeah, I guess so. I guess there's something there. I guess with the idea of having or like commemorating commemorating the moment. I guess also doing it with other people as well, because everyone's doing the same thing. But. I'm not sure if you have to, maybe there is something to the idea of sharing it with others as well or being proud of it. I guess that's, that's what it is. It's pride or like, I'm proud of this. I'll right. post this. Right. Something like that, right? Something like that. What, what do you billboard for? And, and it's somehow our billboard isn't just like t-shirts we wear or the posters in our room. It's extended to like an internet presence. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I feel like there's some, I'm sure that there's guys out there all the time that like their girlfriend's like, you never post me. And he's like, I never post at all, babe. It's like a thing, you know what I'm saying? For sure. <laughs> it's, For sure. Yeah, that that happens. Like, <clears throat> because the internet's bec- our internet presence has become a part of our like life, more or less, or like our representation of us, whether we like it or not, more mm-hmm, or less. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And that's the thing that's kind of got me blown away. But it's also like playing a factor into the tinder and the instagram and the only fans impacting the relationship status of young americans mm-hmm. for the last 20 years or however not, maybe not 20 years but whatever because it's like if i have to have seven a, for sure yeah. <laughs> seven to seven to 16 whenever <laughs> whenever that's just really started to pop off right it's like if i have to have an internet presence well then i'm going to represent it this way it's like full embodiment of internet presence versus i'd like not want to use it at all it's like a I don't even think either one of those are right. It's a weird thing to wrap your head around. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is, back to what we're talking about, it's manipulation. So, like, I think that somebody likes social media in our culture. There are companies, corporations out there, big business America, ad companies, too, because ad companies are making a ton of money off of social media. Mm -hmm. How How many other companies are supporting the social media structure that aren't even social media businesses? You know what I'm saying? Mm hmm. Like, they want us addicted to it, for sure. Like, more than cigarettes. Or the same way a cigarette company wants you addicted to it. It's like, we are alive and business is booming the more you use. So, we need to get as much usage out of each user as we can get. Mm. And with that being said, I think that we are manipulated to make to make sure it's in our life. And the the ramifications of social media in our life ultimately are like, that's the 
That's the arm of the manipulation. It's like they want us to be users so that they can make money. But being a user gets you sick. And then now you're sick because they wanted more users. So that that manipulation structure is like, it's there. That's happening right now, for sure. Mm -hmm. They're making, if you don't want to be on it. Well (laughs) put. Thank you. (laughs) Let's go. Let's go. It's real, bro. Yes. What's up? What are you going to say? Just like, dude, if you're if you're just not on social media, it's like also alienating to a degree. If you don't have like uh, any social media, if, let's say you meet a girl and you're like, here's my phone number. And she's like, okay, like you're dating for a couple times and then she's trying to like find you on Instagram or Facebook or anything. And you're just like, oh, I don't have any social media. I don't do like any social media. That would be like a red flag almost. A little weird. Right? <laughs> right? <laughs> Nothing. You don't have any own. I guess, yeah. I said, some people just don't use certain ones for sure. You know what I'm saying? Some people don't use Twitter at all. Some people don't use Facebook at all. Some people don't use Instagram at all. But someone uses something. Yeah, it's acceptable. Right? It's accept- Yeah, it's acceptable to not use all of them. Mm-hmm. It's like being like, oh, well, I'm a conservative, but like, I believe in the social issues. It's like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, there is room in our culture for you to only have adopted one or two of them. Mm. But it's weird if you adopted none of them. Mm-hmm. That's crazy. Crazy thing going on there. You got to have some kind of online representation of yourself. Yeah. How are you communicating with everybody? Yeah, I get it. I understand, but it would be weird. It would be weird. <laughs> it would be weird. It's like, I'm weird. <laughs> <laughs> I use all of them. Yeah. I'm trying to get in front of that to a degree. Or like, I guess we have, what do we, what, what do we, if I wasn't really doing this entry 38 stuff, I wouldn't really be posting to too much. You know what I'm saying? Like never, bro. Yeah, I'm not posting right now. I'm kind of waiting for the content machine. Hopefully, my sister just graduated. She's going to help pump out some tier one content, some S tier content. Let's go. And yeah. Let's go. I think we had a nice yin and yang of like, I get a boom. I get a big boom anytime I post on my story because I don't, po- I'll like not post for like an extended period of time. I feel like mm. there's something to the, uh, the algorithm is like someone that you view popularly posted for the long time, for the first time in a long time. So I get hyper inflated mm. whenever I do post. Which is like a cool cutting power that I have because I think you are hyperinflated on people's feeds because you're you post consistently and people view your posts a lot. I feel like uh, are like your people get algorithm algorithmized to you because mm-hmm. when yours come on they cl- uh, click it they watch the whole thing and even if they don't like it they expand it watch the whole thing they don't skip it you know what I'm saying yeah yeah so that's why I think like both of us are algorithmized uply right now mm-hmm. sitting on a lean. On the incline. But I really wouldn't be doing any of it if it weren't for MJ38. I just don't feel the need. Yeah. So I I, I understand the, the need or the, the feeling of not needing to have any of them. For sure. I understand it. But it is weird that, yes, our culture, it's like the walls, like societal walls we can like run into to a degree. I guess yeah. it's also for like assuming that it's true. That's a whole nother thing. That's a, that's like the a big thing. The thing that we're dealing with now that we haven't been having to deal with ever before. It's crazy. Right? It's crazy. It's true. You can't run from it. Because mm-hmm. it's true. Mm-hmm. You or, can, yeah, or it's not. And like, you know. You yeah. Know. Yeah. You it know. resonates or it disresonates. Uh-huh. Sometimes I just need to hear other people talk to know what the truth is. Because like, I'll either agree or disagree. You know what I'm saying? Yes. So it's nice because of that. Met Jordan Peterson through that to a degree. Yeah. It has great... I mean, YouTube is fucking amazing. YouTube is one of the best things that ever happened to people ever. I listen. I I listen to so much JPP. <laughs> you have a library of everything at your mm-hmm. disposal anytime you want for free. You learn like anything. And dude, any problem you have, how do I change a car tire? How do I tie a tie? How do I cook chicken in the oven? <laughs> <laughs> These may or may not be my personal searches. <laughs> it might be my search history. <laughs> Like literally, but yes, you could just how to anything. How powerful is that? That's crazy as well. So, in that sense, it's a wonderful thing. Wonderful but order and structure. The social media aspect. I, so, the way I started to think <clears throat> about it is like, if you if you're wrapped up in social media, like if you're a social media addict, it's almost like being a drug addict. Like, I don't really want a life with you because there's like a. Like, if you drink wine occasionally, like on the weekends, or even di- you could have a glass of wine every time you come home and it's not really like an issue. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Same thing with Facebook. You could use it all and be like, chill on it. You know what I'm saying? But like, when you're in the culture of it, like, you're like, well, if you become like an alcoholic with Instagram, like, mm. it's also tough because like people will content create as a living. 
Mm. And they'll make a ton of, or like girls make a bunch of money on OnlyFans. It's like, I don't, you can't really tell that person to stop if they're making like hundreds of thousands of dollars. Yeah. With what authority? Oh, you have something to say. You get a lot of attention. It's weird. Like, it's like virality. Like, what, what's it, what, what determines what gets a lot of attention? Sometimes I think the truth is what wins ultimately. <laughs> We'd like that to be what social media does. I mean, uh, I guess it does, right? If it's fighting for our attention, like likes, they're mm. literally likes. That is kind of like the, it's not like, I guess what I'm saying is for virality's sake, it is what people like. And people, if people like the truth, then that's what will be vi- the highest virality, right? Or maybe the most consistent over over time. Yeah. Maybe not the most popular. True. Definitely not the most popular. Actually. <laughs> Actually. <laughs> the least popular. <laughs> Jordan Peterson's popular. Andrew Tate's popular. Right. Yeah. Because I think there's something there. <laughs> yeah. It's crazy. <laughs> she gets nuanced. Try to smash him and turns into a trampoline. It's like... That's <laughs> 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 hard. <laughs> yeah. This podcast was weird. Mm. <laughs> Sorry. I don't, I don't know if you guys felt that too. We're just riffing. We're talking about... These ideas are just complex too. I'm like, I'm discovering them like as I'm talking to them with you. I'm kind of like sifting through the sands of all these things I've felt recently yeah. and things I've heard recently and coming up with some hypotheses with you about what's going on around here. Mm-hmm. And uh, we live in strange times. Hypothetical bro. land. Yes. We're just breaking down hypothetical land. Yeah. Things yeah. are cyclical too. So there's no telling how long social media will really. And Google's been around a while. Apple's been around a while. Google for sure. We can just trust Google to a degree now. Yeah, for sure. Like Google it. Yeah, Google isn't Google a verb now? Yeah. Well, Google probably paid for that, but <laughs> I guess what I'm saying is it is like Kleenex where a tissue is a Kleenex. Kleenex is a brand. Mm-hmm. Or a band aid. What's a band aid? A bandage? A bandage. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, bro. Yeah, you see what I'm saying? Google it. Like mm-hmm. that's the cool thing about the matrix too, is it kind of like taps into the mm-hmm technical aspect of this world like that this is a computer program like we can kind of wrap our minds around that because of the technical technology world we live in right now where like like we watch i watch black mirror and sometimes i'm like dude the matrix was like a super lit black mirror episode in the 1990s <laughs> like they're just so far ahead of their time bro yeah for real that shit was lit i love that movie bro i remember watching that movie and being like this movie's crazy one of the craziest movies i've ever seen watched it multiple times yeah, you were super young into it. Yeah. I remember my dad being like, The Matrix is dope. And I was like, oh, that movie. And then you were like, Matrix is dope. <laughs> and I was like, Really? Uh, and then I watched it and I was like, This movie's fucking crazy. Mm-hmm. But it was hard to wrap. I, yeah. I watched The Matrix and then that laid the framework for understanding later in life when I felt more detached and woke, or whatever you'd want to call it. And I was like, Oh, yeah, the world kind of is like The Matrix. There is like a, things being put on my face and traditional calendar cyclical years where marketing companies are trying to get me to buy stuff and I have to I have to navigate culture and culture mm. is its own thing being put the, in my face. Follow, yeah, while you're navigating culture you have to follow the white rabbit and that's like a that small little thing that 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 coincidental moment when thoughts and life happen. It's like white rabbit. It's like, oh yeah, I'll go. That, let, let that be your determinant. Your yeah. faith on that, that that's the right thing, be the determinant. Yeah. Ooh. That part. The movie's deep. Yeah. <laughs> Love that movie. So, it struck a chord, for sure. It struck a chord. A lot of people, I'm sure it does. It it was like, yeah, it's a goaded movie. Mm-hmm. Goaded. So, yeah, but then I watched it again, like, as an adult that could conceptualize all that. And then I've done, like, psychedelics and stuff like that. And then I'm, like, watching The Matrix as this, like, composed adult. And I was just like, whoa. This movie is crazy. It's so good, dude. And like the part where some of the stuff that got me this time that didn't get me last time. When he goes to the Oracle, he already doesn't think he's the one. Mm -hmm. She tells him, you're not the one. Then she tells him, you're going to have to decide whether you or Morpheus live. Then Morpheus gets abducted. And then when they think. That Morpheus is going to die. Neo definitely can't die. And that's part of the karma armor he wears into the fight with the agent. And where he draws confidence from is because he's like, if you kill me, Morpheus lives. And if you kill Morpheus, I live. 
but you have Morpheus right now, and you and you intend your intent is to kill him. So in this moment, because your intent is to kill Morpheus, you cannot kill me. Mm-hmm. Because if then, you kill me, you kill Morpheus. Right, right, and and that part had me that I want that he had like figured it out. He and and then that's when he went into the fight with him. And <clears throat> I'm like, not your guy. <laughs> yeah, just couldn't be killed, bro. I'm not your guy. Yo, that had me tripping. That was a masculine, and then Trinity is the feminine. Oh, her name is Trinity, dog. Come on, come on. Fuck around. Come on. <laughs> what What you want from us? What you want? The more I look, the more I find. <laughs> yeah so, and then it gets to a point where he realizes like um he realizes that realizing that gives him the power to realize that he's the one and then when he realizes he's the one he breaks the prophecy and saves both of them however all of that creates what was the prophecy to be an inaccurate prophecy because he is the one and she told him he wasn't the one but the only way he would have done that is if she told him that's what that they he say wasn't the one they say she tells you exactly what you need, need to, to hear, hear not the future not the truth oh! <laughs> and it's so crazy so what does that mean how do you how do you analyze that matthew and i'm thinking about it and i'm like it was the intent it was the narrative of their intent that was dictating what was happening so when neo wasn't the one and she told him, you're not the one. That was the narrative of his intent. And she kept him on that narrative intent. And when he wasn't the one, she she had prophesied that one of them would die. And when she put into his narrative and his belief system, what was going to happen was that one of them could die and the other one would live. And then in his narrative and intent, he was not the one. That propagated the actions that put him in the space where he realized that the narrative of intent was his own power to decide there is no spoon. Mm. And so once there was no spoon, there is no, your, your power to decide the narrative of your own intent and your story and what you're acting out based on your own structure of rules that you know to be true around you. You're, you, you, you become the victor. You can kill the unkillable. You stop yeah. bullets in midair. And, mm. and like, that's the, that's the powerful thing there. And that's like how he knew he was going to kill the agents, even though they were unstoppable. And that's it was all code. Just right. All he was the only real thing. You're right. Go on. Right at the end, it's all code, and he just see, he's literally just sees all the code, and he's like dives into it. Yeah. How does he? How do you do that part? You know what I'm saying? With like the five physics and stuff like that, with the power to bend the spoon. Yeah, I think in, in that situation, he realized that he is the. I guess like the generator of all the ones and zeros, you know. Um, it's, your, it's your it's your hallucination. Yeah. If you lose, you lose to you. <laughs> yeah, he right. just okay, okay. Yes, sorry, I'm with you. To defeat uh-huh. the agent fully, he dives into the agent. Yeah, and and goes into him fully and kills takes, him from the inside. Yeah. yeah, he merges with it. You're like, oh, this is me. It's all ones and zeros, dude. That's crazy. So I think once you realize that the power of your intent to create the narrative, once you realize you're the writer, yeah, it's all just words. It's like you have to mm-hmm. become consciously aware that you're writing and you're like, what am I? I'm writing? Oh, yeah. What I write is what's happening. Mm-hmm. And then once mm-hmm. you know what you write is what's happening, then you you can destroy the adversary from the inside out. Can like, You can't die. Yeah. You write what? Exa- exactly. Right. Yeah. You just write the narrative that you want. Or what the tr- what your truth is, or what your maximized personal legend would be. That's it. That's it. And for Neo, that's literally being Morpheus's definition of what the One was, being the savior for them, or whatever. Mm-hmm. Being the savior. <sighs> Movie's deep as fuck. Crazy. Movie's deep as fuck. Because <laughs> yeah, it's a confusing Crazy. scene when he goes to the Oracle. She says she's not the one. It's like, what? What do you? What did I used to think happened there? At some point, he's like, "Nah, fuck that. She don't know what she's talking about." <laughs> it's like, <laughs> I'm gonna go in right here, Rambo. <laughs> yeah, and then you definitely like, well, he's gonna die because that's what she says. It's like, or you could save him and you'll die. You're gonna have to decide. And then like, he doesn't die though, which is yeah. like, what but he th- does die. Ah, <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. But like, you mean in the sense where like the Neo, the innocent Neo, like the the Neo that didn't think he was the one. Realized he was the writer of all of it? I don't know. I don't know what happens, right? Because he, I think he does realize he's the one whenever he kills 
or like he uh he gets up and he does like the thing where he like gets the dust off of himself he's like <laughs> i'm so, him dog like i'm gonna fight this thing i'm gonna kill it so hard i can't die morpheus is like whatever or whatever man whatever happens there I think, but he does kill him, and he gets ran over by the train, and I think then he comes right back out of the train immediately afterwards, and he realizes, like, oh, this is, like, a permanent problem. This thing's never going to go away. Yeah, you're right. This thing I'm fighting, my adversary, my rival. Yeah. Even if I get strong enough to kill it, it's like, I need more than this. I think Trinity is the Holy Spirit. You know what I'm saying? Morpheus is, like, the father, Neo's like, the son, and then Trinity is, like, the Holy, the Holy Spirit. You know what I'm saying? Dude. Because I was going to say, why, why, doesn't, why can't Trinity dive into people and kill them from the inside out? Mm-hmm. Like, why is Neo the one in that sense? And then why is Kane, who the guy who was represented as Kane, he wanted to be the one. Why wasn't he the one? You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. What what was going on there? Mm. But Neo, he reluctantly. What's a hero if he isn't reluctant? Sorry, <laughs> the just permanent. Come on, per, permanent bar in my head from childish. Mm. Love him. But uh, was it his own reluctancy to to adopt the role? I think so, right? His more virtuous nature of just being like... Because I guess the other thing about the guy that betrays them, the Judas figure, um, in The Matrix, his name is Cypher. Cypher, yeah. Yeah. He he says he doesn't want to be awakened to The Matrix anymore. He's like, if I could go back, I would have taken the other pill every time. And then as soon as he's talking with the agents when he's betraying them... He's like, yeah, I just want you to wipe my memory and like make me forget about this part. Just put me back in the matrix, make me rich, and let me be wealthy. Be an actor. Yeah, yeah, be an actor. I want to be someone of notice. Someone important. Yeah, exactly. It's like what – I think that's what it's like representing to a degree is like Mm -hmm. a disvirtuous nature. Yes. Um, Wanting things for the wrong reasons. Mm -hmm. And I think that Neil wasn't like that. So maybe that's why he he gets to be Not being in love with the matrix. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Why didn't Neil walk away? I don't know. I need to watch the... I've only seen the first, like, two. Maybe the third one. I don't think I've seen all four. I'm not sure how the story is told throughout the end. But in the question of... Why didn't he what? Sorry, why didn't Neo do what? Why did he take the red pill? I don't know. Belief? In his own belief? I think this is the right thing. I think this is all whatever. I guess how Morpheus approaches him in the White Rabbit situation. And Morpheus is telling him the whole time you are the one. But he's like, who are the, like what? I'm kind of this, this is all this is all crazy. I guess maybe how did he get to that it's all crazy moment? How did he get to that? Why did he get picked out of Morpheus? You know? I guess he said, like, I know what you've been going through, something along like the what's he say? In the beginning. He's like talking talking to him through the computer. He's like trying to find answers. So that was the part where I was still washing dishes or something like that before okay. I got fully encapsulated. I got fully encapsulated when he presents him the pill. I was like, oh, shit, it's happening. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure. But yeah, I guess that's, that's a question that you need to ask. He's like, what behavior was Neo exhibiting before he got chosen to be the one? Mm. You know? Could it be anybody? Is that we don't know. We gotta know. we gotta see what the represent what the writers. He's kind of like represented as anybody. He's a guy working in a cubicle, Mr. Anderson. I don't even think he has a first name in the movie. I'm not hundred percent sure. Right. Maybe just be referred to as Mr. Anderson. And yeah, Trinity. When you talk about the, she represents the Holy Spirit. Well, unless you have any more thoughts, I thought we're kind of brick wall because we. You know that was it. I yeah. Think, or because like yeah, I think because he does die, and then she like kisses him, and then he like yeah. awakens. Yeah. What is that? <laughs> She tells him to keep going. I think that's like the Holy Spirit. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Love. That's what it was. It was love. Yeah. She's like, no, you are the one because I love you. Mm. She's like, the oracle. And then her prophecy was prophesized. <laughs> See, that it's like Neo needed her validation to a degree or something. Because he, I don't even know if that point, if he was sure he was the one. He was kind of like just willing mm-hmm. to sacrifice himself for Morpheus, which was part of the original prophecy. And... The original prophecy was also that he wasn't the one. So I think he was operating under that guy's. And then Trinity kisses him and tells him, like, no, you're the one. And then he's, like, comes back to life, which is, like, what, resurrection? I'm not sure. But then Mm -hmm. at that point, he Mm -hmm. is certain that he's the one. And then once he's certain he's the one, he thinks he can break the narrative and save both of them. Especially when he realizes he can just enter that dude. Yeah. He's like, I can do anything. You just fight him with one arm. Yeah. (laughs) Just complete control. Complete control of the fight with the adversary. That's projected through your own story. Ugh. 
Ugh. You're just handling it. Ugh. I'm sick. That's it. <laughs> I'm sick. Love that movie, man. Way deeper than... I thought it was really cool how they bounced off the walls. Running up the wall, shooting people on the wall. Like That's what I thought was dope when I was a kid. Mm-hmm. 100%, I was watching it now and I was seeing all that and I was just like... There is no spoon, bro. Real talk. Real talk, no cap. Mm-hmm. And then mm-hmm. I watched literally my life around me start to like not distort almost. I just felt like there was like a spiral in and out that was like, it's almost like I was seeing another dimension. It's hard to explain it. It was like, actually now that's exactly what it feels like it was. But I just felt like the center of my HUD. So if you just like look forward, you mm-hmm. see like relatively a square. Mm-hmm. And then imagine like the center of your square being like a circle, almost like a camera. Like a cone? Yeah. It was like a cone in the middle. Kind of like, kinda like mm-hmm. yeah. And out here was like the flat of the cone from this perspective of the cone. But then like as the center of it, it got to like a more and more sp- quicker spiral in the middle. Mm-hmm. And I could just feel it kind of like coming at me and ebbing away like waves. Mm-hmm. And I was just like, there's no spoon, bro. I'm tripping right now. <laughs> I don't even know what I'm looking at. I was like, this movie's crazy. I'm crazy. I'm going to go have a day tomorrow. And I just like, went to bed and was just like feeling insane. I'm going to try to maximize my personal legend tomorrow. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> I'm trying to stop bullets with my hand. Mm-hmm. Man, yeah. The movie's great. Movies are cool, dude. Movies, movies are, are lit. lit, dog. <laughs> like Movies are something else, bro. I also, just quick movie reference. I watched Blade Runner 2049. That, it's Ryan. It's been my favorite Ryan Reynolds movie I've ever seen. Really, that movie is great. I've heard of it. Blade Runner. Blade Runner. There's like a Blade Runner series from back in the day. Uh-huh. I never saw that. Didn't know anything. I just know it was dope. My dad told me it was dope. But like, I saw the reboot fourth movie. That's Blade Runner 2049. Like available on HBO, and mm. I was just like, I'm just gonna watch this. And I watched it, dude. Amazing. It's about like, not the same kind of thing, but like, it's about. There, there's old robots, like humans made robots to have a workforce. But then the robots became like conscious to a degree. These replicants did. And then they waged war against the humans. And it created like mass fallout. Mm-hmm. And then from the mass fallout, someone created a new, like from the old replicant company, someone bought it, took it over and created robots that would listen. And then these robots were, some of them were hyper trained and sent to kill the old race of robots the ones that gained consciousness in their own right and they became like sentient and they wanted rights and they wanted to like be communities and stuff like that Hmm. and so these blade runners are the new robots sent to kill the old robots and kill out their existing communities and ryan reynolds is a blade runner and then he works for the police Mm -hmm. and but he's like a robot but like at the same time he like has his own story and his own thoughts and his own feelings and like he eventually f- finds out that there was a, a true baby born to the first set of replicants. And that's when they knew that they were like more than just robots and more than just replicants. That they were like their own culture of people. That they could have their own society because they could start to have their own babies. And that was going to like mm. shatter the earth. What the fuck? Right? <laughs> it's just getting deep. So then Ryan Reynolds thinks he might be the one. Like the chosen baby, the miracle child. And then he even has a memory as a kid of like a horse with the date on like a date on the bottom of a horse is like his only toy and everyone's super poor. And at one point they try to like take his toy from him and he has to hide it and leave it. And he's got this like one core memory, but he's like a replicant. So there's like rules about he doesn't really have a childhood. He was like a robot. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And so but then he goes to a memory maker and shows her the memory and she's like, that's a real memory. And then he goes to the place and finds the horse. And then he's doing his police work and he finds like a true baby was born on the day that it says it's his birthday. And he like thinks he's the one. But then he has to find out that it's like he's not the one. And he has to like sacrifice himself for the one who is the one. But that like makes him miraculous in his own regard because he helps like carry on the legacy of the the replicant true baby. The ideal. The ideal, yes. You're going to die too. Yes. Oh. Dying for the ideal makes you Christ-like, even if you're not the savior. Mm-hmm. It's it is the behavior of the savior. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yes, that's what that movie's about. Wow. Yeah. So deep. I was just like getting <laughs> fucked up. I was like, dude, these movies have been out here. Neil wasn't the one. He is the one. Ryan Reynolds was the one. He's not the one. <laughs> it's like, dude, it's nuts. Wow. Hmm. Hmm. So I've been real introspective lately. 
been real like you mean, huh, yeah. I don't know what real is. Your value hierarchy or your yeah, your value structure, your value hierarchy. Yeah, yeah. Whatever you consider to be the ideal is based off your interpretation or your perspective. What's the ideal you value the most? Your highest. <laughs> Everyone has one, regardless of what you think. How much do you value of actually represent representing the values that you claim to be the ideal is a whole nother question. <sighs> you know what I'm saying? Yes. Cause like how fake is your social media? <laughs> you know? <laughs> ah. Yeah. And it's also just like, it's one thing to say, like me personally, it's one thing to say being on time is a high ideal. It's another thing to be on time all the time. Same thing with going to church or like making your bed, making your bed, working out. There's times where it's like, I value something really highly, but I'm not actively upholding the ideals. Mm -hmm. So you gotta like carve out your ideal hierarchy and then you've got to like live up to your ideals and then you know, hope it goes well for you, I guess, is the third part. Yeah. Hope that you interpret it correctly. And if you didn't, reap what you sow and then see what goes on after that. And try to readjust. Right. In the cyclical nature of yeah. things. <laughs> go back to the creating that ideal hierarchy. It's like, readjust those. Hopefully live up to those. Find out your result. Mm -hmm. Go back to your ideal hierarchy. Yeah. yeah. Every day, every moment. Yeah. It's crazy. And you get good. Also, that's the other thing about our energy is like when, in my opinion, when you live up to your ideals and your ideals are a good set of ideals day in and day out to where you get into like a momentumous rhythm. So it's like easier. You're moving downhill. Like it's way easier to stay in rhythm than it is to create rhythm. Yeah. 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 The snowball effect. Yeah. And like once you have that going for yourself, your energy is higher. Like your maximum output is higher. Like your vibration is higher. Mm hmm. So you could not do that, but you're not going to be maximizing your personal legend because your energy and your vibration is going to be like lower. You're going to have a more, an experience that you would want to get away from. It's not going to be like a good time. Mm -hmm. That's how I think this life thing works. It could yeah. be like a lot more chill than that, I guess. Sorry, you lost me. What, what, what was? Like, uh, if, to, cr to part of creating a good experience for yourself, as in mm -hmm. like when you go into your day and what life gives to you and like your ex life experience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To help create, make that good, I think like you have to have good ideals and live up to those ideals so mm -hmm. that your energy and your own frequency is like a high energy, high frequency. So like good ideas are coming to you, flows coming to you, like positive outcomes are coming to you. But when you're yeah. on that like dreadful energy where you're like, I hate my life, I hate today, why do I do any of this? Something bad's going to happen. It's like you're attracting lower experience experiences. Like lower frequency experiences, like more. I think it's more likely that bad things happen to you. You ever like having the worst day, and like when it rains, it pours. Yep, that's it. You know what when I'm it saying? It rains, it pours, bro. It's like you're on. Some people would say, I might say, you're on that low frequency. Like mm -hmm. you got to get off of that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Or know that they're just just bear the storm. Sometimes it's like it's like maybe it's just one day out of however many days, or it's like a span of time. But yeah, you got to push through it, or it's like just keep going, man. What's your other, what's your other option? The other option is way, way, the alternative is worse or to like just a further down, downward trend. Yeah. Super the worse. The spiral, the spiral nature of downward trend versus like, all right, I'm, I'm on a downward trend, but I'm like, the stock's rising. I'm going public. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard as fuck. 24 seven. Yeah. You're trying to like mitigate your downslide. It's like, mm -hmm. you ever heard, don't let one bad decision become two bad decisions. Yeah. 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 It's like just trying to fold a bad hand. Like, if things aren't going well, like, some people have heard artists say in the studio, if it's not going well, they just leave. Like, I'm not going to waste more time. Trying to force a vibe. Yeah. And same thing with, like, a bad day. It's like, if it's not going well, I'm just trying to make sure it doesn't go terrible. You know? Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. you also can't control, like, let's say you are conscious enough to be generating positive experiences for yourself. You're really trying to uphold your ideals. Like, you, you do a great job of that. Sometimes, it's like, the, the story of life gives you downswing. So, you can't really help that. Mm -hmm. Like, even if you are doing your best to create positive experience for yourself, you can't stop what is, like, the forces at play or yeah, bad like, things happening. Yeah, it's like, yeah, walking up uh, or going to work on Saturday, slipped and busted my ass on the stairs, <laughs> out, the, out the door, and then sat in 30 minutes of traffic. <laughs> See? <laughs> like, but, what the fuck? <laughs> what are you supposed to do about that? By the end of the night, my heels were hurting like a song, bitch. And I was like, oh, my God. This is the first time I've, I've worn these shoes 40, 50 times. In the last month and a half, two months. 
two months plus, whatever it is, whatever, however long it's been. And like, I've been fine the entire time. I worked last week, six days in a row, or yeah, six days out of seven. And then this week it was five days out of seven. But on the seventh day or yeah, the Saturday versus last Saturday or any other day before this, it was like, hey, my heels hurt. Like my feet hurt. Huh. Some bitch. <laughs> What's up with that? Mm-hmm. Uh, super super weird. I don't the range of pores. Yeah, right. <laughs> That's just so weird, bro. Did you squat? You squatted heavy. I saw you squatting heavy, but that, you know that deal was correlative. No, I don't think so. So weird. Yeah, it was strange. Must er- be the shoes and the insoles or whatever. I didn't get some insoles. <laughs> some Doctor Scholl's in it, be for real, mm-hmm. man. I I don't know, bro. I don't. know. It's hard for me to downswings happen. Downswings happen. That's moral of that story. <laughs> everybody, you ever seen everybody having a bad day? Right, it's Makes just you feel in like, the air. Yeah, exactly. Are you like the the sequence where in which you hear the news or the information that's like presented into your story or matrix? It's like wow, oh wow, oh wow. It's like connected, connected, connected. You know what I'm saying? So we're. It's like oh, something's going on. Or there's a meta something that all three of those have like underneath them, like they're all their own individual instance. Through our own life, whoever, like, this person, this person, and this person have their own story going on. But then through your story, they're, like, something there. That's, and you're like, oh, wow. Like, I see, like, a, you know, <laughs> so it becomes more than just instances or one part of life. It gets two-dimensional. Life gets two-dimensional, you know? Like art or, like, a story, like a metaphor. That's so weird, dude. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Run that back on me. I'm catching it. Run it back <laughs> on me again. We were talking about. What were we talking about? Two dimensional. You said it becomes like, like getting more dimensional. If you're able to see something in the. Uh, God, what were we just talking about? My mind drifted I for a myself. second. <laughs> Damn it. That's how you know it was important. Uh, yeah, Good exactly. thing we recorded it. It'll come back. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. But yeah, bro. I see life come alive too. And that's when you know. The, the the value structure, your hierarchy value structure, when life comes alive and you realize, like, you're happy that you've done everything you can to be the person you are because life is, like, coming to you, in a sense, it makes it all super real, super worth it. It's not just words on a podcast or, like, stuff I'm reading out of books. It's, like, this is this is my actual experience. This is, like, the life I get to live. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It's, uh, it's all we got. You know what I'm saying? Max, maximizing the personal legend is worthwhile. It's all there is to do here. Yeah. Be all or you. out of all the things you could do here, that's the one that's like the most worth it. What, what what do you value? What do you think that would be? What do you think that would look like? How do you justify that? What does that actually look like? What's the other alternative? Just like you can play video games forever. Like distract yourself forever. It's whatever you'd like to. Yeah. Yeah, well, I guess what does it look like to not maximize a personal legend? Or if that's not the ideal, what is the ideal? Mm-hmm. You know? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I guess like to enjoy the, the distractions of life. Yeah, to be like drunk. You know what I'm saying? To a degree. Off the ego and off the matrix. And rather be in this. Or make this your God. Or make this your, I believe this is what's real. What's your foundation of what's real? <laughs> The guy just wants to be an actor. He wants to be someone important. He wants to enjoy the Matrix and eat medium rare steaks. Damn it, bro. I understand the allure. I get it. I get it, bro. I get it. <laughs> I get it. But being the one's probably cooler. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you stop bullets. Like, I'd be him at the <laughs> Son of a bitch. David, dude. yeah. Yeah, I'm just like. It's crazy. The podcast comes so full circle on me. I'll be like talking about thinking about my life for like a week and like talking to you about it. And then we get to the podcast and then like really dive in there. And then we're talking about like the Matrix and David and where we're at. And it just, I hope it does the same thing for you guys at home sometimes. Yes. I hope that, especially as you get into rhythm with us and like we get like fans that are listening to us week to week, we should like develop some kind of symbiosis between our energy where you guys are kind of like, some of the stuff we're talking about becomes more prevalent Relevant. to you because you, see you, you gave attention to it. Uh huh. That white rabbit, very elusive. It's real though. You'll you'll like feel it. Like you can't not see it when you see it. You're like, there it is. And you can like ignore it if you want, but that's like more energy. You're gonna have to expend the energy ignoring it. It's not that it didn't exist. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Right. Bang. <laughs> Yo. That's it. That's tight. Dude, yes. 
I can bounce us off of metaphysics real quick and get us out of here, maybe. But yeah, we up? are going. Can I tell him? Oh, please. We're going to Vegas. We're going to Vegas. We're going to Vegas. By the time y'all watch this, we will be already back. <laughs> <laughs> Vegas. That's kind of. So that's kind of that's just, that's like a time capsule. It's kind of strange. Yeah. Welcome. <laughs> yeah. Welcome to the time capsule. But by, by the time you see this, you know, or maybe not. Maybe we did really well. Maybe I'm hanging out for another week. <laughs> we'll see how it goes. You never know. <laughs> you never know what's going to happen when we go to Vegas. Might never come back. MJ38 is going to Vegas. Mm-hmm. Um, my spoon's not real. We're bending the walls. And we'll see We'll see what the next episode looks like. Yes, dog. I'm going to propose. Oh, that's Good. crazy. That's going down in a couple of days. This is so cool. This is, this is such a cool thing we're doing right here. <laughs> That's like, yeah, that it's crazy because that's a surprise. Yeah, yeah, that has a surprise. It hasn't happened yet, but mm-hmm. by the time this goes public, yeah, you'll probably have seen an Instagram post. It's going down. So tight. Talking about the family unit. Yeah, seriously. Yeah, Justin's doing it's his important. F- yeah, you think it's so? Crazy. Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. It's more than self fulfilling. Shit was hard. <laughs> <laughs> Shit was super hard. Yeah, dude. Yes. But self self fulfillment's important. Mm-hmm. It's like there's you need to take care of you. Yeah, you want yeah you want you to be winning. You gotta live with you for sure. Oh, yeah, man. Hopefully we be winning. <laughs> we ain't never going back. Yeah. Oh yeah. Vegas is gonna be fun. I want. I want it. I want it. I mm. want that life. I'm Come about on. that action. Like I think we're ready to make music and make podcasts. Mm-hmm. I think we got it, dude. We're there for it. I'm here for it. So here for it. Yeah. It's only a matter of time. No idea when or what or how or why. I know why, but how or what or when. The words of Big happening. Sean, I know I'm going to get it. I just don't know how. I just don't know how. Yeah. So yeah, hopefully, ho- I feel the same way about you guys. It's mm-hmm. like, I hope y'all are getting it. Yes. The story's going to work out. It can work out better than you imagine. That personal legend. Try to write the best story for yourself. Do the best to live that story to truth. But then know that someone else can have it better than you could have written it. Ooh, that's a lot. That's a lot to think. A lot to believe. Golly, I should get deep. <laughs> it's worthwhile, though. It's worth it. Yeah, I think it's worth it. It's worth it. So. Yes, man. Come on, Vegas vibes. <laughs> Dude, Vegas vibes. I'm telling y'all, I'm turning up. It's going to be fun. I'm turning up. What's your, favorite, what's your favorite game in Vegas? It was Blackjack, but now it's been craps. Hard. Craps took my life. Well, not took my life. <laughs> Whoa! It took that life. <laughs> that part of my life. The life that, because like, going to Vegas, this will, be, this will be my ninth year with my mom. That's Nine years. gas. And like, it was Vegas, or sorry, it was in Vegas. It was Blackjack. That was the, that was the game. That was the game. It was so fun. But as of the last two, maybe, this will be the third year, I think craps is more, I'm having a better, better luck with Lady Luck, a better dance with Lady Luck in that game. Yeah. <laughs> that's tight a lot of people tell me that mm. you're like the second or third person where really? I, we thought blackjack was like the game to play and then they're like dude i love craps craps is tight like steve told me that i think Derek told me that you told me that it's fun and i think it's the best odds i don't know i'm pretty sure that's true the best odds for the house or not house sorry for the for the user for the user <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah all right well either way however it's going down slots whatever we just bump into a talent agent who knows what's gonna happen bro who knows what we're gonna sit to or sit next to on these planes and be next to at these events and these places and how the atoms collide yeah it's energies and frequencies i've been trying to create positive experiences for myself i believe there's no spoon mm-hmm. i'm taking on the role as the one i accept that <laughs> i accept that i'll be neo come on there's I'm no guided my ideals there's no limit to the amount of uniqueness in the world. You can all be the one. We can mm-hmm. all be the one. Mm-hmm. You're a maximized personal legend. I don't know what's going on in there. Yeah. I could, I could guess because we all like, share. We all we all share one. That's one thing we share. <laughs> we all share what? Or we all share uh, the common fact that we all have a consciousness. So, like We all have a life that we're living. We all have a story that we're in. Yeah. It's like, right. That's inarguable. <laughs> yes. 100%. You're right there, right? Yeah. It's like you're not like talking to an inanimate object. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 100%. You're like, come on, couch. <laughs> you feel me? <laughs> All these girls got OnlyFans couch. It's crazy. How do you deal with that? <laughs> What's your stance? <laughs> Seated. Seated. <laughs> L. L position. 
<laughs> no, you're right. You're right. Yeah, we, we all have to. Uh, we all have to deal with the fact that we're conscious, and the, also in the Bible it says like, pain, like life is suffering, and you have to die, be alive, suffer, die. Those are things we're all having to deal with for sure. Mm -hmm. But maybe there's a way to transcend death. Maybe, just maybe. Oh, I mean that's what we learn about in church for sure. Reason for the season. Yeah. Vegas oh, yeah. vibes. Vegas vibes. <laughs> Let's go. Christmas vibes. Christmas vibes. Hell yeah. All right, we'll holler at y'all, but when we come back, Justin's going to have... We'll be a billionaire. <laughs> <laughs> yeah! Heard that. Sorry, I'm peeking our mics and shit, but... <laughs> it's the big wave right there. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. Trying to come back on some different shit. Yes. Different shit. What do you want to say to your old self? <sighs> Proud of you, bro. Keep going. Yeah. That's nice. it. <laughs> yeah, keep going, bro. I love you, kid. <laughs> Do your best. Keep doing your best. You did your best. You just got to keep going. There's always more to give. Yeah, dude. I was going to say, do better. The like, ideal, the ideal is uh, catchable. You can't, you can't hold it. You're, you know what I'm saying? The ideal. It's just like right outside your realm of maximum capacity. Yeah. That is why Jesus is like so amazing. Just one step ahead. You can't quite hold it for too long. It's like your pump. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you can be there. You can have a pump. It feels great when mm. you're upholding the ideal. <laughs> yeah. Like, you, uh, unfortunately, it's like not, it's not sustainable. I mean, some ideals are sustainable, you know, but it's like, that's the thing about balance is like nothing's sustainable to a degree. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah. I think just like in the idea of the energy of like a, the ideal. Yeah, the ideal is like one step outside of your best. Like you literally just can't do it. It's like literally what that is. You know what I'm saying? Because otherwise it'd be standard. Yeah. It's something you could achieve. It's like if you could achieve it, it's not your ideal. It's like the ideal is the thing that you can't achieve. You can't do. And once you do it, just like I'm going to push, push what I can't do a little further out. And then you can do all things. Yeah, that's why being on time is, a stand, is an ideal is because I suck at it. That's why, that's why it's an ideal. When I see someone doing it, I'm like, that's hard. So yeah. I'm always here on time. That's a this buck. Time. Yeah. That's wet. <laughs> yeah. That's points on the board or whatever the fuck that means. Yeah. I feel you. Like, uh -huh. hard thing accomplished. Difficult task made look easy. Mm. And that's dope. That's idealistic. Yeah. Yeah. Being honest. Why is that an ideal and it's not just standard? It's, it's like, hard to do sometimes. Mm-hmm. Hard to do and it's easier to lie. Yeah. Sometimes. We get a choice. You have to choose one or the other. So, yeah. You're, lying takes more energy for sure. I mean, it's not always like, quote unquote, the easiest sometimes. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's like you're creating definitely more problems for yourself later. Way more narrative to keep under control. Yeah. It's like, golly, dude. I'm Narrative manipulation. So happy just to be living in an honest realm. It's like, I, don't, I forgot about what it's like to ever have to keep up with lies you're telling people. Like a long time ago. Mm -hmm. Jordan Peterson really stomped out any fire of just like, because I feel like there was times where I'd be like, yeah, dad, I'm going to go to Luke's house. And then I like drive to college station to go see my girlfriend at the time. And this is like high school. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's like lies like that, you know? But then Jordan Peterson was like, don't lie. It'll like open up your world a little bit. It'll create a new color you get to look at. And then I was like, oh, he's right. Mm -hmm. It's like purple's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> like that's what it felt like. Mm -hmm. Yeah. My clarity or like, you know, life got turned up a little bit. Yeah, more. Rightness of, of like the truth of what's, what's really going on here. Yeah. Right. That's cool. Yes. So, yeah, that's just a lot a lot of stuff thrown at y'all. I like this riff. Hopefully you're along for the ride. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> so it's a little. If you're listening to this long, you're definitely along for the ride. We appreciate you. We appreciate you. That's what this show's about. Yeah. But yes, hopefully next time you see us, we're big up. Massive up. Massive trying up. Trying to be so up that it's weird. Mm -hmm. Strange up. And then y'all just see us all the time. Yes. A lot more music coming out. Yes. Three songs coming out, hopefully, relatively hopefully soon. soon. We got, it's like 90% of the work's done. We try to finish the last 10%. Yes. And Fucking then, I guess, yes. of the music part. And then we got to do the picture and the, what you call it? Creating the name of the title or title of the project. Yep. We can do that while we're in Vegas. Things. But yeah. Music coming out. Hopefully a lot more coming out soon. A lot more coming out soon. I'm freaking got bars for y'all. I'm barred <laughs> up. <laughs> He's barred I'm up. Barred up, dude. Uh, rapping the hardest shit in the world. The new Drake Hole and Jake that came out. Mm. 
fucking for all the dogs extended edition yeah dude i've just been those beats just inspire something out of me just like it's cool i've learned this new skill too when i'm rapping to just be spontaneous like sometimes i'm like i put on like 10 percent spontaneity and i'm like integrating it's it's like i'm hitting shuffle sometimes like instead of i'm just picking in unpredictability and mm. then I once I've inserted some unpredictability, I'm like, well, that was kind of crazy. And then I like use that as like the rhyme scheme for a little bit, and then I'll like switch off of that and then inject more. I'm like reshuffle unpredictability. Give me something else crazy different. And yeah, then, yeah. I'm doing that like in real time though, and it's like a cool thing. It's a cool weapon to have, a cool spell to cast as like a writer or like a flow maker. You know, yeah, someone who's able to manipulate the syllables, pronunciation, and timing of those things. Right. So cool, bro. Into more than what they are, just like on their own accord. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You take all of them, make them into a crazy thing. It's like, oh, that thing's tight. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm like, that bops. Like, yeah. that's that's sick. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, just, just a more development as an artist as I continue to grow up and older. And I'm just like, nice. Nice. It's like being a wide receiver and my hands keep getting better. Like, dude, the catches I make now are nuts, dude. And crazy footwork. I run crazy routes. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's tight. Mm-hmm. so that's cool so yeah once we get the time and the freedom to be making more music it should just be like over oh. dude i'm gonna drop an album that fucks society yeah up mm-hmm. like i want to make an album that you guys are like dude this shit's like really good dude it's Jeez, like thanks. really good it's like yeah they're playing a lot in like atlanta and like miami and like the streams are up like all over the united states it's like a million views later you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. boom we gotta figure out how to organize our own tour and shit fuck yeah bro <laughs> Yep. Yes. Yep. Hopefully we'll be That's like, going down. Just have lunch and think about it one day. Mm. Imagine. Mm. Shit, yeah, bro. Hopefully y'all maximize that legend. We're rooting for you. Yeah. Care about this shit. Care about this shit. Mm. I care about this shit for you. I love you. Love y'all. Talk soon. <laughs> Peace. Bye. Rolling through the city to the light. Really ain't no telling where.